Thanks to established titles for sponsoring today's video. There was a time when visiting Mars was a thing purely of science fiction, relegated to the likes of John Carter or Arnold Schwarzenegger's character Douglas Quaid from Total Recall. However, thanks to recent advances in technology, the first humans might be walking on Mars within this decade. They'll be brought there by Starship, a rocket in development by SpaceX, which hopes to get humans to Mars by as soon as 2030. Once the colony is established, many others will start making the six-month trip to the Red Planet. Perhaps this is a thing that you might do in your lifetime. Even if made as a commercial vacation, the journey to Mars is no trivial cruise or long-distance flight. If you go, you will not come back the same again. You quite literally could be changed forever. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Today we will be taking a look at Starship and imagining for ourselves what a voyage to the Red Planet might be like. SpaceX company founder Elon Musk has long aspired to take humans to Mars. In 2005, Musk first declared to the world his plans to create a long-term, high-capacity rocket, one capable of carrying massive weights into orbit. However, it took over a decade of development and tinkering with the idea for Starship to be first officially announced. Starship is a super-heavy lift-launch vehicle made to deliver 100 metric tons to low Earth orbit and beyond. It is fully reusable, able to launch and then land itself thanks to high levels of control from its multiple engines as well as its flaps, which extend to slow its fall in atmosphere. Starship is a spacecraft of two parts. The first part, the Super Heavy Booster, is a 69 meter tall beer muth filled primarily with two massive tanks of liquid oxygen and liquid methane fuel. It sports up to 33 Raptor engines, capable of producing between them around 76 million newtons of force. The Starship spacecraft, which is the second stage, sits on top of its super heavy booster. It's 50 meters long, with a diameter of 9 meters, and is equipped with a distinctive shiny exterior. This shine is important. Starship is not made from the usual carbon fiber, which is a material you might expect in a rocket, but instead a version of stainless steel, a similar material to what you might find in your knife and fork. Stainless steel is a surprisingly useful building material for rockets, it turns out. It can heat up to temperatures of over 1300 degrees Celsius without melting or warping, which is useful when you intend your rocket to perform atmospheric re-entry. But more than that, it is cheap and easy to mass produce. This speaks to Musk's vision. He intends to produce entire fleets of these. In his mind, Mars is somewhere that humans will set up a serious presence, and when that happens, it's only natural that materials, products, and personnel will need to make the journey to and from the Red Planet. Which brings us to Starship's payload. As previously mentioned, this mostly hollow space is able to carry around 100 tons. It has a 9 meter diameter circular base and is 18 meters high tapered to a point, allegedly because Musk thought it would be funnier to have a pointier rocket. It can be used to carry satellites, which can then be released into orbit for commercial ventures. However, SpaceX has made it clear that when it comes to the trip to Mars, they intend to put humans in this area. Currently, SpaceX has not revealed what the interior design of this habitation will definitively look like, but there are some preliminary ideas. So let's explore those ideas. Let's imagine that in a couple of decades from now, we receive a call that tell us colonists are needed on Mars and it's time to make the long trip. To begin with, you would travel to a SpaceX launch site, possibly in cooperation with NASA, and would meet up with your roughly 100 co-passengers. 100 passengers are how many SpaceX thinks it can comfortably fit inside of Starship, although Musk mentioned that this number could be as high as 200 if passengers were willing to really cram themselves in there. You might do well to get to know some of these people now, as unlike with a regular trip in an aeroplane, you are going to be spending a lot of time with these individuals. On an aeroplane, it is often tempting to watch a film, read a book, or go to sleep. However, you can't only do that for six whole months. These are the people you are going to be eating breakfast with, you will spend your free time together, 
You may form friendships. Human interaction is important for healthy psychology, and there is no way off this flight midway if you find there's someone you don't get along with. Better start off by making friends early. Together, you will then be ushered into the rocket itself. Likely for the initial launch, you and the others will need to strap into your seats. All that thrust beneath you will crush you with powerful g-forces that will push you into your chair. More intense than the most powerful roller coaster, a certain level of physical fitness will be an important element of this part. If there is a medical emergency on the flight, you are not going to get proper hospital treatment until you get to the other side. You will likely have been screened before traveling. Launch and liftoff will only last about 9 minutes. At some point in this journey, the super heavy booster will detach and drop back to Earth. The booster is reusable, and by controlling its descent, it will land perfectly on a landing pad, ready to be filled up with fuel again for another voyage. Thrust will switch over to Starship. While in the atmosphere, it will use three of its Raptor engines, but will switch over to the other three once the ship has reached true space. These secondary Raptor engines have larger nozzles, which are better suited to propelling the ship through space. All of this will be enough to get you up past the Kármán line and into space. You will now be traveling at thousands of kilometers per hour. However, as the boosters cut off and as gravity drops away, you will suddenly experience weightlessness. Gravity, as we discussed in this video, is only a form of acceleration. If we do not accelerate, even if we are traveling at thousands of miles an hour, we will float around. This will be a major feature of the next six months of your life. By now, the seatbelt lights will come off and you can begin to explore your environment. Current plans expect Starship to be split up into multiple floors or areas. At the bottom will be crew cabins. You will likely share a cabin with one to two other people and conditions will be a little cramped. Above that, there will be a common area for gathering and social interaction. You will see exercise areas and equipment, an important part of space travel. On the International Space Station, where astronauts also spend six month stints, exercise takes up two hours of their daily routine. You will need to do this too, to prevent the loss of muscle mass and bone density. Without it, you will lose considerable weight and may not be able to stand up once you reach Earth's gravity again. There may also be some emergency shelters. Hopefully you will not spend too much time in these, but it'll be important to acquaint yourself with where they are in the event of an unexpected solar flare. One of the greatest threats of space travel is radiation. Prolonged exposure can result in cancers and other negative health effects. Solar flares represent a hazardous spike in this radiation level, and the captain might at times require you to take refuge in these thick walled shelters for the good of your health. Mealtime will be a little different from what you are used to. The food you will eat in space must be able to survive for months on end without going bad. There is no opportunity to restock. The International Space Station does not even have a fridge. All of this means that vacuum sealed, rehydratable food will be the order of the day. Whatever you eat, be wary of mess. You will not be able to sprinkle salt or pepper on your food as the low gravity will send this flying into the air. Thus, these will be provided in liquid form. As for water, well, the only way to carry enough water for 100 people to Mars is to have excellent recycling systems. So anything that comes out of you will likely be siphoned off and recycled, only to be served back to you at your next mealtime. It's best not to think about it. Then again, this is not that different from what happens on Earth. All the water you drink has been through many other living things systems multiple times. As I said, best not to think about it. Showers will not likely be present, as without gravity, water does not flow. Astronauts tend to use waterless shampoos and rub themselves with wet flannels. Toilets will be something you need to strap yourself down to use, and they will be vacuum powered to get rid of waste and to stop it floating around. Sleep will take a little adjusting too, as there will be no true night and day anymore, and gravity will not pull you down onto a bed. Think you could get used to all of this? Well, here is where the really strange things start happening. As you travel through space, you will start to experience changes. Under the effects of low gravity, you will start to grow taller. 
Some astronauts gained an entire inch of height after six months in space. Your face will become redder and puffier as your heart, so used to fighting against gravity to pump up blood through your system, will find itself too good at its job in a weightless environment. This change can lead to health issues, thickening of carotid arteries, and sight issues. These are not all fully understood by scientists, as there are not many examples of humans in space to test from. But perhaps the strangest of all, your very DNA will change. There is always some adaptability in human DNA. Certain genes are turned on or off at certain times in our life under certain conditions. In a twin study performed by NASA in 2019, two twins with identical genetic material were tested. One was sent up to space for six months, the other remained on Earth. When the two reunited and were tested again, it was found that the astronaut twin's DNA had changed in how it was expressing itself, creating differences between him and his brother. There were shortened telomeres, weakening of the immune system, and issues with bone formation. It's worth noting, upon arriving back on Earth, most of these changes in genetic expression reverted back to normal after six months. However, 9% of them did not. In ways we do not fully understand yet, spending time in space changes you, most likely because of the radiation the astronaut experienced. So, eventually, you will arrive at Mars. Starship will fall at an angle and will use its flaps to shed an incredible 99% of its kinetic energy aerodynamically, traveling in a long arc through the atmosphere before eventually bringing you to the planet's surface. You will step out into the biodomes and sniff the manufactured Martian air. Starship will be checked over and then refueled using oxygen and methane extracted from Mars itself. As for you, you will have plenty of time to ponder. All journeys change us but yours may be the one that you can never change back from. The you that left Earth will never truly return home. But then, perhaps that's just how it always is. Here's another funny thing that you can change about yourself, and it's something I've already done. I've become a lord of my own one square foot plot of land in Scotland with established titles, who sent a certificate with a unique plot number and the new title. Thanks to historic Scottish customs that call landowners lords or ladies, you can too. Maybe I should start my videos by saying, I'm Lord McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Importantly though, it's not only a fun gift idea for a loved one this Christmas. Established Titles is also a way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland, as well as support global reforestation efforts. With every order, one tree is planted. As an added bonus, the first 200 of you that use my link in the description will all be put around the same location on the estate the plots are located, meaning together we can form a little Astrum Space Kingdom. Plus, you'll get 10% off your purchase. Why not check it out? Thanks for watching. If this is a video you've enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps support the channel. Another way to support is through becoming a patron or a member. If you want to have your name added to this list of supporters, check the links in the description. All the best, and see you next time.